so we good uh, shall i start okay okay all right uh, so i uh, i like for this meetup uh, okay i want to talk about you know two of the recent modules uh, which i have contributed or worked on and those are uh, what second okay uh, one is uh, the ignition error pages and next one is the documentation generator so just like i observed you know two very common like problems or issues and then i thought about you know contributing these modules or like collaborating with you know other contributors uh, to work upon so i'll just take like 5 uh, 10 minutes to quickly show you you know what these modules are what they do and how they help you out and like main reason of uh, talking about uh, you know in these meetups or like any other you know events is to you know gather more feedback around the around, around these modules how you know uh, these can be improved or what all uh, alternatives uh, do you use you know uh, in your projects uh, so i'll start with the first one first one is uh, ignition error pages most of you must have like seen or uh, might be aware of uh, you know this library uh, called ignition which basically you know works with uh, works well with symphony and laravel projects and main aim of this library is to you know beautify your error pages uh, so uh, like this is the like a sample image uh, of the of the error pages you must have seen like in drupal we just get a you know website encountered error and that's very not at all uh, a good ui as a developer uh, we can you know uh, figure out yeah, like okay we have to go to our watchdog or we have to check logs to get more details but uh, with the help of this uh, like package uh, you know you get a lot lot of information and since the ui is good you are you know always up for consumption and in a way it enhances your you know debugging as well as development skills uh, so this module is simply you know integrating uh this uh, ignition package with drupal so that we don't have that ugly error pages anymore uh so once you install this module you get like two very simple configuration uh like you can enable disable it and then there is a dark mode if if that's uh, what you prefer although we have a enable configuration but then you know recommendation is to uh, have this disabled in production altogether because you wouldn't want you know your anonymous traffic or your production to you know give uh, hints to you know uh, like all those who do security attacks or your user uh, to see see this error pages okay and uh, right now in this is uh, this is my local website and i've already you know modified code a little bit to throw this like a uh, exception so that we are able to you know see ignition in action so once you do it and this is the like the error page uh, you know you get you clearly get okay uh, which line is throwing the exception and then you get a very you know a beautiful like stack trace so you will see like okay what all is happening as as you know drupal being a php app starts with index.php then it goes to this class this class, then your middlewares come into an action you get to know a lot of things about okay how your code exactly reached at that point and to achieve this earlier you had to you know either set up xdebug or some other sort of tools uh, but this package is just you know install the module enable it and your error pages are like uh, very beautiful and it's not just about like getting info of this error uh, you get few other like useful information as well such as you know headers uh, which can be very useful let's say you you are debugging some issue related to you know varnish or your any other cdn then you have to rely on various chrome extension or any other tools which gives you information of header uh, so that you know you can debug at header level what what's happening with your cache uh, so it just uh, simplifies everything so uh, this is the first module uh, right now we have added a description and uh, actually kevin kevin is another contributor who came up with the idea who did the initial integration and then i have worked on it to you know add those configuration as well as uh, documenting it better so this is already uh, ready and it can be installed and you can check only issue right now is uh, you can see uh, we don't have a stable release right now we'll have it soon but the main problem right now is uh, it will only work with uh, drupal 10 because uh, this package ignition uh, it relies on symphony i think 5 or 6 
and till Drupal 9, we are just, I think is compatible with Symphony 4 only. So it, it, it will take up a lot of effort to make it work with Drupal 9. And I'm not sure if we are going to do that, but anyway, we'll have uh, Drupal 10 in, I think, uh, five, six months or, or maybe like, you know, uh, based on last timeline, which I checked. And once that is there, uh, you can, you know, have it in all your website so that your error pages are beautiful. Uh, so that's the uh, first project. Uh, so should we talk about right now, uh, have a QA because if I start talking about other module, then it might get confusing. Uh, so any questions, any good idea. Uh, feedback around it? Not a question, but a statement. It is very cool. Um, I'll definitely be looking at adding this into our backend stack. Okay. Okay. Thanks. And uh, uh, another question, which I had, like, which I'm still, you know, checking up with uh, various other user, uh, will it impact the way, you know, the 500 error pages are displayed or can it somehow be used in production as well for, you know, beautiful 500 error pages or something like that, or anything you're doing right now uh, uh, for those pages? Could this be used by support? operational support for websites to sort of trigger trigger you know work or tickets tickets of work um, no i didn't uh, get your question like are you saying uh, whatever error it displays should be logged somewhere so that those can be resolved easily yeah so these Sorry, I'll rephrase the question. Could these errors ever appear post the site going live? Sorry, I've been multitasking. <laughs> Do you get my point, Greg? Do you yes, know where yeah, I'm going with this? yeah, but Stuart, Stuart posted a funny sort of like response, which is actually the reality. You're going to scare people away if you show these errors. So the, the reason why the module has the enabled tech box there and it warns you that it sh you shouldn't enable it on production environments is that if something goes wrong, like with a module or with your code, uh, it usually throws an error which end users should not be seeing. And there's multiple concerns there, uh, is, uh, scaring oh, people away. Okay. Or, is, is sorry, there... and, 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 and the last thing is that, that, that it also, some of these error messages might disclose informations, information that you, you wouldn't normally want to disclose to people. But this is a, a more beautiful way than the standard way of displaying these errors and a more useful one. That's, that's the point. So um, it could be used as part of QA and or possibly is there a way for us to hide the error information so I include permissions in there. So only like people from the service desk could see them. Yeah, like it, uh, like uh, I get two questions. Uh, so one, like, will it help QA people for a better, you know, reporting, better testing? Yes, because now they have more information. And it is mainly meant for developers. It shouldn't uh, like, you know, interfere with your QA test. If QA sees this, then it is probably like, you know, ticket rejected. Because that this clearly shows an error. Thank you. Yes, yes. It is like, think of airbags, you know, it is a good airbag. Now we, we don't like, okay, uh, let's say, you know, like those come into picture whenever there is an accident only. So somehow you can, you know, related with that it, it is something let's hope uh, doesn't come into picture in production or something like that sorry i'm thinking out loud so thank you in advance to everybody for their patience could this tool could this be used as a tool as well to triage if there's if if a website is down or something isn't working right to try and figure out what could be the possible root causes yes yes okay fact, cool Thank you. I'm with you now. <laughs> Gaurav, I was just going to ask you about like what 
what what was your motivation to create this? Like, were you continually doing projects and, you know, you thought, oh, gee, I wish I had a nice error page or, or what? How, how did it sort of come about, like in terms of its need? Yeah, so I was uh, working, like I was exploring Laravel for another project. And in the, that, uh, you know, there I saw this error. So that's when I thought of, okay, this can be done in Drupal. And when I, you know, Googled ignition error uh, in Drupal, somebody already, you know, had contributed this project, uh, like a few, few months, like you can see 29th of Jan only. So, uh, so Kevin must have also, you know, got this idea of integrating recently only. So from that's where I, you know, uh, got this motivation by working on uh, one on a Laravel app because that was displaying error very beautifully. Yeah, great. And and just just so I get a feel for, you know, the contribution space and you know every contribution is different. I I can understand and appreciate that. But how much of your own time would you? have been have invested in 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 this particular contribution just just roughly uh not much i think uh you can like it not not even a week i think to integrate it and get it running so uh, you can see not not a lot of code base actually there is just one main event subscriber which is registering your ignition and then it is you just you know uh, ensuring that configurations are respected that's it so it's a very simple contribution but i believe it uh, will be useful and um maybe it's a weird question but w w would you envisage like a, a lot of further contribution to this like new features whatever it might be oh where could we take this is probably a, my open question to you uh, where could we take uh, this project forward? Yeah, like feature-wise, is do you envisage you know, a whole lot of new features? If you only had time, you could put them in, or is it sort of you know self-contained as is? What, got a feeling for that or not? Yeah, yeah. So uh, let's. Uh, it depends on the main library itself. Let's say you know if that library builds new feature, then those can be integrated in this module as well. Let's say dark mode. Uh, dark mode is not a like a something which you you know definitely. Uh, need for this uh, so so the main library uh, i'll show you the link for that uh, uh, this one so if they keep on adding more features we can you know add configuration in, in our drupal module uh, to have those and that's how it goes so there is one very good production mode as well which which we are exploring uh, so in production environment it kinds of you know uh, gives a complete blank page. So that is something we can, we, we were thinking of integrating, uh, but then we were uh, then, but then we thought, okay, it, even if it's disabled in like, if the module is disabled in production, that also uh, does the same thing. So uh, this library will, you know, further uh, define how much we can uh, contribute on this project or what should we change. Yeah, great. Thank you. Uh, I didn't show you the dark mode. That's just like, okay, can be toggled from here as well. And you can keep it enabled from your uh, setting as well. That will just show it uh, the dark mode. Okay. Uh, any other uh, questions around it? Uh, I'll move to my next module then. Uh, okay, I, I'll, I'll go ahead then. And all those who have joined uh, uh, recently, I just uh, talked about uh, Ignition Error Pages module. Uh, that's machine name Ignition. Uh, you can check out the page, and you will, you know, get all the information. Uh, whatever I talked um, about. Well, we have a question from Cameron on the on the chat, and it says Symphony has a pretty exceptional exception handling. Why? What was the reason you didn't use Symphony's exception system and you used this instead? Okay, okay. I haven't uh, seen that. And I, I think it is, um, like, as I told you, I, I checked a Laravel app, and Laravel was, you know, integrating this library. And this library was also in, in the top trending PHP libraries. That's why I thought of, you know, uh, 
uh, going with it. Uh, but yes, if Symphony, uh, Symphony also has something like that, that might be a very easy integration in Drupal. And if it works with Symphony 4, uh, it might make sense to you know go with that only for now. So that's more of uh, uh, even that would be I think uh, like open source as well like Symphony or whatever that library has. We will have to. It then boils down to you know this repo versus that repo. Uh, what are advantages? What's what's different between them? And then only we can uh, take a decision. So this one has like I think uh, 150 stars and not uh, like we'll have to check uh, compare it that way. Uh, any other uh, questions? Okay, I'll check the chat once. Okay, uh, no more uh, questions in the chat. I'll move to my uh, next project then. Uh, thanks for you know all the feedback around this, and I'll I'll explore that uh, symphony. Uh, error package as well. All right. Uh, so next uh, module is, uh, let's say, you know, uh, uh, this is the documentation generator. Uh, so basically solves, you know, two problems. One is, one is uh, like a knowledge transfer. Let's say, you know, you get a Drupal eight or nine website, which has already been developed. And now you have been asked to, you know, uh, build new features in it or do a support and maintenance of it. Uh, and you have to, you know, uh, go install your website, go, go through all the content types, go through all the views and go through all the taxonomies, custom entities, check out all the modules which have been created. And then only you are in a position to, you know, uh, do further development on it or debug something. So this takes up a lot of time and we have to, you know, uh, check out a lot of, lot of things uh, for that. So that's one problem. And second is, let's say, you know, uh, you have completed a website and now you want to hand it over to your uh, like content creators or editors and you want to sort of you know generate a cms documentation or any kind of information which will be you know helpful for them to understand okay what all uh, has been developed in the website uh, so to make uh, the to solve these two problems uh, i i saw this module uh, documentation generator it was already developed uh, by someone, but it was a sandbox module. Uh, so I took up uh, the maintainer access for it and, you know, fixed it for deep Drupal eight and nine and added a stable release as well. Uh, so I'll show it to you. Let's say, uh, so this is my website, uh, Drupal uh, ABC uh, dot X, Y, Z. And okay. Uh, just um, ignore the ads for now. Uh, so I've installed this module and this is what this module does. Uh, you get a complete overview of your, you know, uh, the architecture of your Drupal website in single page. So you can see uh, it starts with taxonomy vocabularies. Right now I will on only have tags and then it gives information of all the views uh, which are there, then menus, and then, you know, uh, your roles, what all roles are there in the website, what all content types are there, what all fields are there, whether, you know, fields have a description or not, that also you can, uh, get that hint from this, you know, uh, this overview page only. And so this is what uh, this module does. And let's say you have to, you know, uh, export this information. So right now it does two integration. One is with Word and one is with PDF. So just uh, simply generate it. I'll show you uh, one generated PDF. So uh, you get a document like this of your website. And this information can be, you know, used for for a, for a knowledge transfer, for handing it over to different developer or for final, finally handing it to your client. Even if uh, like, let's say this document, you know, cannot be used as it is, you can, you know, copy paste information from this and prepare your uh, CMS documentation around it. Uh, so this is what uh, this module does, uh, making knowledge transfer and, you know, hand, uh, handing over the website uh, very easy. Other than that, this module has, okay. Uh, so uh, all the information which you saw, uh, like taxonomy, views, menus, they are like sort of like plugins, uh, which have been already written in this module. You can enable them, disable them. And the best part is you can, you know, create your own plugin. Let's say custom information about my website. You have created that plugin 
and once you uh, add that plugin and enable it your documentation gets improved further whatever information that plugin is returning also gets added to this overview page as well as to the pdf document so that's a like a single tool to you know to document your website very easily uh, plugins i've shown you and then there is a simple okay then there is another option for you know disabling elements let's say uh, if you want to hide something from your documentation if you let's say i don't want uh, people to know about you know book content type or that was just created for experimental purposes and i don't want it to be part of my documentation i can just uncheck it and, or like uh, disable it and then it won't be shown uh, so this is what uh, this module does right now like added like you know made stable very recently only and there are a lot of ways of uh, solving this problem and every team prefers doing it their way uh, but to have a generic solution this is what um, i came up with and yeah so so that's the second module uh, i wanted to talk about any feedback or how we can improve it further or how you are uh, doing it, uh, you know documentation uh, that would be helpful for me um where does it pull the information from is it like see how um when you create a content type it gives you it allows you to to specify a description that um when content editors create content of that type they see the guidelines sort of is that what it pulls and it, and it adds there as information yes yes from the, like whatever is already in the cms it will you know pull from there only let's say uh content types and then it is just showing you the link then there is one content type called article and this you are uh, this description use article it, it is already provided by the developer or by anyone else when creating this content yeah. type. and same goes for descriptions uh, as well just as a recommendation i, I recall a, an old module it was called admin notes or something like that i'll try to find it which allowed allowed the site builders to actually take notes of uh, the things the way that they were configuring them so maybe you can consider integrating that. I'm not sure if it was ever um, ported to Drupal 8 and beyond. I remember using it at some point for Drupal 7. Uh, but but having that all that information from individual pages that the site builder may have added in a single report that that sounds something useful. What does that report? Okay. Thanks. I'll I'll think about. I'll you know check that. And there were other modules as well, which were you know uh, like I saw one module uh which doesn't like give you information uh, of this but allows you to you know edit all your uh, description in from one ui so so that's also like uh, another related module uh, but main purpose of uh, this module is like making you know documentation easy all right any other uh, questions around it Is there a, oh, sorry, go on. Sorry, you can go on. Um, just ask. Thanks. Um, is there a um, API or some sort of a hook that uh, allows to uh, programmatically inject um, different documentation that we want, if you want to you specify something extra? Yeah, yeah. So uh, as I mentioned, uh, these are like the, enabled plugins okay so you can create a new plugin and then that can be used to you know uh, like add more information for modifying you will have to modify the existing plugin or maybe uh, check how you know plugins can be extended uh, i'll quickly show you one uh, like okay if you go to source code uh, yeah there is a sample plugin uh, you know added in the module file so you can you know indicate okay this module has to be there and then basically there is this elements array where you are you know collecting all your information which has to be shown uh, so simple like uh, you know uh, just add a new plugin and your uh, whatever information that plugin is providing gets becomes part of the documentation yeah thank you that makes sense
yeah yeah so so in a long run let's say if this if this becomes a successful module or you know uh, then let's we we add hook help in all our modules and we are doing various other things so maybe other developers would be encouraged to add this plugin as well so so that you know uh, our website is documented every time Sorry, maybe I missed this. What's the use case for this? As in, like, what? Who is the intended user? Uh, is it a developer, or is it more um, documentation for site admin? Who is it? Both, actually. Like, in case of knowledge transfer, in case of you know moving website as a support project, and someone else, if someone else is picking up you know support or maintenance of a project, they would want to quickly know how the website has been built. so it's useful in that case and overall it's giving you a like a, it's a tool to generate cms documentation which can be used by site admins or any other uh, stakeholders yeah thank you can you post the link in the chat please ah uh, sure all right uh, thanks everyone uh, i don't have anything to add you can you know collaborate with me any time uh, later on or check with me thanks for brilliant thanks maybe we stop recording now okay